Um, but of course, in growing up in Hollywood, England, as it was called, uh, which was near Parliament Studios, where my father then went to work, uh, was a wonderful you know, ground to learn. But of course, if you live in um, Hollywood, if you grew up in Hollywood or even growing up in America, everybody's got two businesses here, which is their own business and the show business. You know, it's the two, it's everybody split up and um, everybody knows a lot about movies. You know, it's a really movie, it's a movie country. It's a, it's a movie, movies belong in America. You know, it's a sort of I think what was clear from the very beginning um, with Mad Dog Morgan, which um, many of us had the great pleasure of seeing a little taste of recently with not in Not Quite Hollywood, um, was that th there you were, a young 27-year-old Englishman who travelled far afield to Australia and um, managed to put together the best of the best of the Australian talent at the time, Jack Thompson, David Gopalil, Bill Hunter, and then managed to give that film, which could have been very parochial and Australian, this international stamp. And um, you know, d by bringing Dennis Hopper into the mix and the craft, and I think you talk about your body of work. There, there is an or you are producer as auteur in a way. There is a Jeremy mm. Thomas stamp an that's internationalist that. Yeah. that has a, an impeccable craft that has a sense of the market, but but isn't being made for the marketplace. So I, I think um, I mean it seemed from the very beginning you kind of knew what you were doing. Yeah. Well, it's not a popular theory in cinema today, especially today, is to follow your taste. And um, I think it's very important, and that's a privilege independent filmmakers have, is to follow their own taste and their own passions, rather than the passions and the feelings of the marketplace and the industrialized cinema that is our challenge. Uh, the sort of the industrialization of film has brought the sort of the amount of opposition to what we are trying to do as independent filmmakers. And I count myself as that because of all the films I've made in my life, one was made with a parent and the rest of the films have been made as orphans. So um, I, I feel that, it's, and it's more difficult in America probably where there is you know, even greater domination of these sort of four or five companies that dominate the production and the means of distribution of our films. Um, Not anymore. <laughs> maybe there are three yeah. companies. There are three companies left. Yeah, there. So, but also you know, I think what you showed very early, Jeremy, is this: like you took the power into your own hands. You know, in the in the in the movies that you were making coming out of the seventies and eighties, um, even prior to establishing your sales company, Hanway, you were going to Cannes and selling those movies. You were designing the marketing campaign for those movies. In an, in we've all and many of the filmmakers have come up assuming that there were other people to take care of much of that, but it certainly wasn't your tradition rising as a producer? No, I've, from the very first film I took care of, not myself, uh, by myself, me and a group, um, maybe stimulated by me, but you know, always with a group of people, and very important to have a really good group of people around you. Um, we did try to do it ourselves, we tried to take it ourselves, to be independent, to be uh, in charge of your destiny, to be much more in control of your destiny. Easy to say, you know, where's the money? To be in control of your destiny, but then, being in control of your destiny also means finding independent money as well, which is an enormous challenge for every independent filmmaker or getting close to somebody who can find money, um, which is a terrible problem for me too. I mean, it's not, you know, I'm not making it sound easy. You'll see some of those films took three or four, five years to raise the money for, or even on Crash, eight years. So, you know, it's a long time to, you know, you have to stick with this idea. And um, I'm a producer, once I want to make a film and, um, and I, you know, attach myself to an idea and a filmmaker. I'll stick with it until it's done. And um, you, you, of course, some advice is that I meet filmmakers who have projects, and I look at the project and I hear about the project, and I immediately know it's hopeless. And I want to tell them just don't stop, change the idea. But you know, I, I didn't do that myself. Mm. I just stuck with my idea. But you were trusting your gut rather than trusting what the marketplace was dictating as what your path should be. Well, the marketplace has been more fickle. Uh, it's more fickle, the marketplace. And if you stick with them um, closely to what you like and what you feel you like, um, you ca you, it's, it may be more faithful to you than um, the marketplace itself, which is so even harder to, pen to penetrate than the, um, to make an indie movie and get it out. I mean, you know, the amount of films to make it, if you aspire to make one of those really enormous films, it's gonna be very, very successful. If you make a more modest film, and those films look expensive, but I try and make them at a very, very low cost. I mean, there's an idea to make the films at a low cost. 
those actors that you saw, which I have to say mainly very beautiful actors and beautiful looking actors. And it's very important to get the right ingredients in your film. And some of those clips were chosen because to show what the ingredients you can put into low budget movies. And none of those movies, even uh, The Last Emperor Looks, was a, an expensive movie, but you know, that, believe me, it was made at the lowest cost possible. It was scraped together, that film, made with as many favors as possible and, and was made for, you know, modest, for a film of that size for a modest amount of money. And that's just something else that an indie can do. He can make a film at a different cost, you know. It's a low cost, uh, low cost philosophy. The, I think an interesting thing or important thing to communicate, Jeremy, too, is that you always, um, you embarked upon this as a as a business, not just as a pro, you know project to project. That you really seeded from early on the well, sense that you this was your career, and you were building you built the recorded picture company and then Hanway. Um, sort of talk a little bit as as the filmmakers well, the are struggling. Okay, at the beginning I knew nothing. Okay, I went to Australia after being an editor with a director who, who uh, I'd worked with as an editor, and we were going to make this film. I was going to edit and produce a film, and he was going to write and direct. In the end, the producing was such mayhem that I couldn't get anywhere near the editing of the film. So it was, you know, it began, and I, I couldn't claim I knew anything about filmmaking. Then um, I started to understand um, the second, third film, getting screwed up badly, getting ripped off, getting stolen from, losing control. I decided, right, I'm not going to do it like that anymore. And I worked out the system of how to be a um, private man, to be a... Again, you make say independent, independent of it. So I managed to be in the, become, you know, there was a philosophy I gained, but not at the beginning. Because at the beginning it's completely cloudy. I'm sure, you know, many people in the room who were about to embark or want to embark on making films, it's a little bit cloudy how to do it, you know. And it's, um, it, nothing becomes clear immediately. I mean, when you leave school, what shall I do? Or when I'm going to start something, what shall I do? How do I do it? How do I enter it? So it can't be clear at the beginning. So it wasn't really at the beginning, um, I didn't have that. Mm -hmm. It grew in me, that it grew in me, my expertise at business, putting together deals, understanding the marketplace, understanding territorial, um, understanding soft money, understanding um, trying to make people attracted to my films and, um, and then ultimately trying to choose films that people will see. Because it's very, that's also, which are, are not, um, doesn't mean that um, because they're popular, they, well, you want to get the popularity, they don't have to be sort of base. The idea that there are still a lot of people who want to see provoking, thought-provoking films, films for, made for grown-ups, you know, because most of the films we see are made for the youth audience. And um, that's now, but there are a lot of other people in the world. And um, so that's, I'm, I'm focusing on that market. Mm -hmm. well, the films are so original and audacious. Um, you know, it's interesting when you talk about you know knowing that you have an audience for those films. As your as your gut is telling you that there is one and that you should make this, are you already starting to formulate how you sell it? Yeah, what the campaign yeah, might I'm be for that? I'm thinking about. I'm thinking about. Always, I'm thinking about how can I get this uh, attractive to people to see it, even if it's very extreme in the material. And uh, most of the material that I choose uh, is um, uh, extreme in some way. You know. It's because uh, I can't. I can only challenge interest, people's interest. I can challenge people's interest without the dollar. I have to challenge the. I mean, the dollar of marketing dollar. I can challenge their interest with the thing, with the, with the product, with the. Um, you know, it's not a supermarket product. It's sort of individual shop product with something which has to be very, very special, for people to want to buy it. You know, so it's. That's so why I try and put as many beautiful actors in films as I can, get wonderful music for films, make sure the film is made beautifully, well, handmade, like a handmade suit, you know. It's made, tailor-made, you know, it's not made. It's made, you know, every area I try and take care of, in a, you know, in a, in a, in a, not in a domineering way, but just in the quality control. 